In this video, I'm going to discuss a little bit more about how you could do a system that probably have more value if you're a homeowner. Um, you you could not using these um, low cost Amazon um, grid tie inverters and using a in phase micro inverter system. So we're going to evaluate those two systems and I'll just compare and contrast them. There's been a lot of people that want to know how come we can't get a UL system that um, that does that does this kind of setup. And so we're going to kind of do a little bit deeper dive into the differences between these systems. So in this video I'm going to um, contrast the Amazon uh, micro or grid tie inverter with uh, and talk a little bit about NEC code and then I'm going to talk about like um, a hypothetical system that you could do for I think a, a, a pretty low cost uh, so um, let's get started on this um, I've already I already have another video that um, describes um, kind of my uh, I guess my objection to um, this this kind of setup okay um, and it's it's um, I have a do-it-yourself installation where I've done the the um, panel um, the panel work um, so what, what the the problem is that you know we don't have any C compliance and um, the NEC compliance uh, basically says that you need to backfeed directly to a circuit breaker in your panel. And if you don't have the room to do this, you can uh, sometimes change some of these breakers to, um, to, to skinny breakers. And then you have to imp basically uh, put one of these wide breakers in your panel. And so what it does is there's a, a line one is the black and um, line two is the red. And so what it does is it's um, going to um, d evenly distribute the load between these two um, these two lines that come in. So you have um, these two uh, power lines and if you read a voltmeter between these it's 220 volts. Well the problem with um, the Amazon is it only feeds um, one of these <laughs> one of these lines. It only it only feeds one of them, one circuit. So you're not going to get um, the proper balance. So what you really need to do is have a, a, a grid tie inverter feed both of these legs. And you don't get that with an Amazon. So let's say your refrigerator is on this one. And then um, you choose to put the uh, grid, the um, cheap Amazon inverter on this breaker. And so let's, and normally it's like, this is probably the black and this is probably the red right but so so you're you want to counter the load of the refrigerator but you're not going to be able to if you stick the amazon on the wrong circuit right you know you have to be able to identify the red and black circuit so anyway it's one of the the problems that um we run into and and um, NEC compliance also um, says that you know you should uh, have a, a, a cutoff um, you should have um, a cutoff box uh, let's see if I can find that let's see here uh, doesn't go into that here but I do have um, uh, a video on that and I'll show you um, what a cutoff box looks like here oops okay you got to have one of these <laughs> NEC code so basically if the fireman if the fire department comes out they can hit the switch and and kill your uh, and, and kill your power to your panel or your le electrician could put you know easily throw the switch and kill your power to the panel it needs to be right next to 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 the panel as I've I've shown on this video so let's see what other NEC compliant things um, uh, you know so we've covered it doesn't really um, it doesn't really uh, provide correct distribution between line one and line two if you get the Amazon solution it tends to overheat so a thousand watts really isn't a thousand watts um, and then um, 
and I think the end fight phase for homeowners might be a better solution. So I'm trying to going to try to talk you into it here. Um, and the the other thing is you can't, of course, back feed legally with with um, with the Amazon system. Um, so you're not going to be able to um, run your meter backwards with this system legally. Uh, so is there another solution that we might be able to eventually, if we wanted to sign up, we'd be able to um, do that with an, with another solution? Um, and the other thing is smart meters don't backfeed. Um, that you know they they tend to stay you, you're not going to get any credit you're going to be able to consume your loads but they usually don't backfeed some smart meters even charge you for the the electricity you're backfeeding so you might even get into that situation where you get charged for the backfeed okay so we covered the um i think we've covered the nec um the NEC load. I mean, I think you you can find out you can find um, solutions on um, on you know you can find plenty of online stuff how to set that up um, where you're going to be able to properly connect you know your um, your your inverter into the panel and you could you could do that with the cheap Amazon one but of course it's only going to give you um, it's only going to give you line one or the other you'd have to run two microinverters to actually cover all your loads in your house okay so let's let's look at um, I want to look at real quickly the Amaz the um, the microinverter by um, in phase um, so it's it's a it, it runs line one and one two it's hundred and forty nine dollars and it's got a um, it's got a 200 this is the IQ 7 plus it's got a um, 295 watt max and you may say well that isn't adequate for me I need a full you know a uh, thousand watts well like I said you don't really get a thousand watts with this thing because it'll probably melt down and and die right well when you if you do um, if you do the end phase IQ 7 system you can overdrive it you can get yourself you can put um, you know uh, you know 310 you know you could put 360 watts on it i've got i've got um 385 watt panels on it right so um you can you know pay and you can you know these panels don't cost a lot of money uh um you know for for a high wattage panel like i'm running i'm running 385s uh so I'm running really big panels, okay? The other thing you can do is you can run these panels in parallel, of course, and 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 run run higher. So what what happens when when that happens? Well, it turns out that um you can they've figured out that m most people don't use the high wattage for their for their for their grid tie inverters because the sun isn't perfect um, it's not summer all year long you, their tilts not perfect they get dust on their panels uh, there's all these variety of reasons and they basically figured out that you don't give up that much um, you know you can basically have with these things you can you can drive them you know uh, for four to you know you can you can overdrive them basically um, and that's what I've chosen to do I've, I've gotten a 39 I've got 385 panel and I and I um, and I you know I only give up um, 3.4 kilowatts a, a year so it's it's nothing I, I give up and and I, I I generate way more electricity than the 295 so um, and and it, I'll just kind of dry I give you one other um, you know this is this is kind of what it looks like right so uh, you know it I've got 295 max but you know it only matters uh, and I've got 385 on the roof of my panels but I'm only um, I'm I only 
I own, I'm only hitting my max from from like uh, 12 o'clock to uh, you know two o'clock, right? And I'm not really giving up that much power. Okay, so what's the next um, the next thing is these Amazon or these um, uh, IQ7 microinverters are waterproof um, and they spread the load properly and um, they and they comply to NEC and they comply to UL um, and so so what are these systems uh, cost oh, oh and you could and you could feedback uh, legally you can legally feed so you could start with the system sort of quasi bootleg if you wanted to I guess and then just later you know get get permitted but I, again I recommend getting permitted and I recommend getting uh, a utility agreement so you can back feed, feed and use the utility as your um, battery and it makes makes a lot of sense okay so um, let's look at uh, a, a real quick look at um, the components of the system that you might you might want to have. Okay, here's a backfeed breaker that you can put in the panel. We already looked at some like round ten bucks. Okay, here's the um, cutoff that you yet need to have any C wise. That's like twenty one bucks. Okay, the conduit is you know it's going to be three six or you know around four bucks say for a ten a ten foot piece um, um, and the wires like thirty bucks so uh, you know we're talking about you know if you you bought all the stuff just I'm just doing the marginal cost of the you know the microinverter versus buying the the, um, the Amazon solution so we're talking about you know 284 for you know a 295 watt you know a microinverter um, and I think you know it, it's a it's a lot better value so I hope that uh, I've, I've you know covered you know answered some more questions I these questions kind of were brought up on my on my uh, first analysis so I uh, wish you good luck with your project and um, and thanks for watching my video.